two main issues with uh, the chemical chelators. The first is well known, and that's a liver toxicity issue. Uh, they, they like to monitor uh, your liver enzymes, looking for elevation of liver enzymes during the course of this chelation therapy, which is an indication of liver toxicity. Then there was these uh, sort of nonspecific problems that people were having uh, that they started calling redistribution, that you're pulling mercury from one area of your body and redistributing it to another area of your body. And so you, you know, you were toxic over here and you do the chelation and now you're toxic over here. You know, it moved from one place to another or it's going from the liver, you start having neural issues. And nobody really understood why that was. It was sort of this uh, black box term of, uh, of redistribution. Uh, when we started testing people and looking at different compartments, looking at how much in, in the blood versus the urine, we found that some people had significantly decreased kidney function, meaning they weren't able to pee out the mercury. Now the problem here with the pharmaceuticals is that you're taking all the forms of mercury, many of which would be going out through the liver into the stool, and you're rerouting them through the kidney. If your kidney doesn't work, you're not going to be able to get them out. Yet, you've sent a, a chelator in to bind them up through areas they were on the blood and on the outside of cells, and you're mobilizing them all to get down to this door going out. You sent a whole crowd to go out the door, but the door's closed. And now you've got a whole crowd of uh, toxins swimming around in your blood. And now uh, I'm pretty clear that that's the problem that some people have with these chelators. The other way that expresses itself is in the diagnostic techniques that have traditionally been used. And those are called a challenge test. You'll take these same water-soluble chelators to flush mercury out to the kidneys, and they measure your mercury in your urine before and after you take the chelators. And theoretically, the higher the number, the more toxic you are. You flush lots of mercury out through there. What if, what if the door's not open? and you flush all this mercury but it doesn't come out, do you read a lot in the urine then? No, you don't. So then you look at that person and you say, oh, well, you're not very toxic. But that guy over there had a very big uh, challenge test. Well, he's very toxic. And I think this is another fundamental flaw. And what was going on is if your kidneys don't work, you don't pee out the mercury, you don't get a high signal. In fact, recently there was uh, a uh, paper looking at these DMSA or DMPS challenges. This is one of the chelators. And they found that the people who had the highest level in their challenge got better the fastest. They would take a challenge level, they'd say, hey, you're really toxic, and you, you had a low challenge, you're, you're not toxic. Now we're going to give you more of this chelator to get the rest out. And the guys who had the high levels, the real toxic ones, got better like that. The guys who had the low challenge tests, they didn't get better. How do we know that they weren't filled with mercury, but it's not coming out? But these other guys, your kidneys were just wide open. You put the chelators in, everything dumps out. You bring down the levels, and they feel better. So these are the flaws that I found in uh, the traditional paradigms, and that's why we switched to a different method of doing detoxification and a different method of analysis.